Let's all stand, and we're going to read John chapter 2, the first 11 verses of this chapter, and I'm going to share some things with you that will, I believe, will excite you and things that maybe you've never seen before. Jesus turned water into wine, and you have heard probably many sermons about this, but tonight we're going to share with you some things that the Spirit of God showed me while studying this chapter. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples. At that time, Jesus had about five disciples, and they were called to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. In fact, that's the last recorded words of Mary. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purify, purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. That would be 20 to 30 gallons apiece. Of water. And Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. That took a lot of work, by the way. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not from whence it was or came, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. When men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. Well, his disciples had already believed on him, but they believed more. I mean, we ought to believe more. When I get done tonight, you ought to believe more. Give me more believing. Amen. Believing in Jesus, his power. I want to use for a subject tonight, it's not just water. Maybe seated. It's not just water. Now, the beautiful story is, is that Jesus went to this celebration. It was a feast, the Bible called it, surrounding a wedding. And there at the feast, Jesus was there. How many know Jesus likes fun? How many know church ought to be fun? It ain't like Jesus looked around and found someone having a good time and just went over to him and said, quit, quit having a good time. Stop. <laughs> no, when he seen the blind man, he gave him a good time. When Jesus saw the lame man, he gave him a good time. Jesus loves to have fun, excitement and fun. And a lot of people get the idea about church thinking, oh, church is not fun. How many know the Bible, the church can be a Bible-believing church and believe in the standards of God's holiness and still be a place of wonderful fun and excitement? This church is like that. I'm so grateful for such a beautiful church and a place to gather together and to worship God. Now, Jesus, he's there, and they run out of wine. Now, I'm not going to spend time about the wine. I just want to talk about something that the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. When they ran out of wine, Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes to Jesus and says, they have no wine. It's amazing how mothers can say something to you and never ask a question, but it's but they are expounding something they want done. Right? A mother can say, the trash is running over. You don't say, oh boy, yeah it is. No, she meant for you to take it out. Hello. And so Mary, the mother of Jesus, when she said they have no wine, she meant for Jesus to do something about it. Right? 
Now, I'm not sure, Mary, this is the first miracle of Jesus Christ. This is the very first one. This is the, absolutely the first sign. There's seven signs in the Gospel of John. If you, if you want to count another one, eight after the, at the crucifixion, then there's seven signs. This is the first miracle of Jesus Christ. So I'm not sure that Mary was saying, I want you to turn water into wine. I want you to create a miracle. I'm not sure that's it. It isn't like Jesus, when he was a little boy, made toy airplanes and made them fly in the sky. It isn't like Jesus walked across puddles of water when he was a little boy. It wasn't like when Jesus was a little boy, he made little toy clay birds and threw them in the air and they'd fly away. I don't think Mary ever saw miracles like that. She did see the angel, Gabriel. She did see, she knew that Jesus was the promised Messiah. But maybe she was kind of insinuating that maybe Jesus ought to take his five disciples and go into the town and buy some wine. Maybe that's what she expected. Why did they run out of wine? I don't know. I, I know Jesus was invited, but I'm not sure his disciples were. And they may have came along not really being invited. Amen? And the reason they ran out of wine is because Peter was probably drinking it. But anyway, you're going to count on it, amen? After all, Peter's the first, you know, pope. They say he must have been a Catholic. But anyway, are we going to start out this way? Come on. So I don't believe that Mary really had an insight as to what Jesus was going to do. But Jesus says to, and, and what's beautiful is Mary says, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. That's the last recorded words of mama. Whatever he says, do it. And Jesus tells him to take six water pots of stone. And those water pots of stone would hold 20 to 30 gallons of water. The Bible says that the disciples or the servants, not the disciples, the servants filled the stone water pots to the brim. When Jesus Christ tells you to do something, fill it to the brim. We ought to come to church and fill our prayer to the brim. We ought to come to church and fill our faith to the brim. We need everything to the brim. Our worship to the brim. Our praising God, fill it to the brim. Our faith in God, fill it to the brim. Yeah. Expecting God to do something incredible. And so they filled these pots of stone, which represents the six, there were six of them, and it represents man was made on the sixth day. The pots of stone represented man made on the sixth day, lifeless, without Christ. And they filled those pots to the brim with water. And God is going to do a miracle and turn the water into wine. Jesus is going to turn the water into wine. 180 gallons of wine. Wow. Wow. If there had been 180 people there, they'd have had to drink a gallon each. I doubt if there was 180 people there. But what this is telling us is God is more than enough. God always performs exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And Jesus turns the water into wine. He says, now dip the water out, bear it out to the governor, the feast, and spread it. And he tasted it. And from the dipper filled with water to the mouth of the governor, it turned into wine. Isn't that good? That brings me to kind of the strength of the message tonight because I have something that's quite different than maybe many of you have ever heard concerning Jesus turning water into wine. 
But it goes with the message, it's not just water. Jesus said, fill them to the brim with water. Or he didn't tell them to fill up the brim with water. They, he said, fill up, fill up the pots with water. And the disciples did what they should have done. They filled it to the brim. And Jesus said, take the water. And the water was turned into wine. It wasn't just water. Hello. We do all kinds of things with water. We, we, um, we, put, we, turn, we make coffee out of water. By the way, when you do that, you ruin that water. But anyway, people make Kool-Aid out of water. Don't argue with me while I'm trying to preach. People turn water into tea. Hello. But Jesus turned water into wine. But water is, someone say tasteless, but it's not. If you've ever hauled hay, you know that water is not tasteless. You get thirsty and you drink water. It is, an, it's the, it is the only thing that can quench your really physical thirsty soul. Water is the only thing that can really suffice. It's not soda pop. It's not, it's not coffee. It's not tea. It's not doctored up water. Water is an amazing, essential thing that God gave us all to have. And without water, we would all die. Water is, keep, is what keeps our physical bodies alive. But how many know that you need more than just water if you're going to keep your spirit alive, your future alive? Jesus Christ said in John 7, 37, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. It was more than just water. John 4, verse 13, Jesus Christ says, but whosoever shall drink it of this water, speaking of the Jacob's well, shall thirst again. But whosoever drink it of the water that I give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall uh, be, a, be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So we see that it's more than just water. We all need more than just water. If we're going to live forever, we need the miracle power of God. Amen? And so they may turn, Jesus turned water into wine. The, the joy was back in. The blessing was taking place. And, and, and Jesus Christ was bringing a great time into their lives. But I want you to know, as we approach this message, I want you to understand we only have so many gallons of water in our life. Are you listening to me? We only are going to have so many gallons of water in our life. We have to have water to live. In our life, when will the gallons of water be turned into wine? They'll have to be. I don't mean literal wine, but our lives will have to be turned into a conversion and a transformation by the power and the miracle of Jesus Christ. Somewhere in this life, we've got to have our water of life changed and transformed into everlasting life. Come on now. When does that happen? Well, there's two, two times it happens. And before I give you the, t twice, the two times that it happens where Jesus turns our water into transformation, into life, everlasting life, there's two of them, but before I tell you those two, when did Jesus turn the water into wine in the time frame of the wedding? He did it at the end. The water was turned into wine at the end because they had plenty of wine at the beginning, but they ran out at the end. So we receive the transformation, the new birth, Jesus turning our waters into a conversion, a transformation, joy, unspeakable, everlasting life. First, it begins at a new birth. When we become born again and we come to Jesus Christ, he turns the ordinary waters of life into everlasting rivers of life. 
at birth. He allows us to drink of everlasting waters as a well in us, springing up into everlasting life, and we'll never thirst again. That begins at a new birth in Christ. But at the end of this journey, the great transformation will be in our heavenly home. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. The waters will be turned into everlasting life when we step into heaven's side and he saved the best for last. Woo! The governor said, you've saved the best for last. The first was good, but now the last is better. You, you just served the ordinary thing, starting out the ordinary wine. You just started out with that. But then all of a sudden you bring us something that, that Jesus has transformed, and he drinks it, and, the, and, and the, the, the servants knew that it was just water. But between the dipper and the lips of the governor, the, the master of the feast, it turned into sweet wine. Wine that would lighten the mind. Wine that would gladden the heart. You said, did Jesus turn the water into real wine? Well, let me put it like this. Was the lion that he created in the beginning of creation, was he real? But he didn't kill. Was the flowers that he created the beginning of creation, were they real? Yeah, but they didn't have thorns. Yeah, it was real wine. But it was wine that wouldn't make people act stupid. It was wine that would lighten their minds and gladden their hearts. It's the best wine of all. Yes, it was real wine, really made by Jesus, not by Anheuser-Busch. Say, is it okay to drink wine? Well, get you a glass, go to the faucet, pour you out a glass of water, and go, Jesus' name, wine, and drink all you want. Just have at it. I'm not here arguing whether it was fermented or what it wasn't. I, I am arguing the fact that Jesus would not do anything to hurt someone or cause someone to sin or become an alcoholic. Drunkenness is a sin. Well, let's get off of that. Because everybody gets upset because is it real? Is it not? Is it real? Well, Jesus is real and everything he did was real. Amen? So we start out with water in our life. See, the water pots of stone is a picture of the unconverted man. You feel the unconverted man with the word of God, which is the water of God, fill it to the brim. And Jesus transforms that man by his word into an eternal, everlasting creature, turning water into wine. Isn't that beautiful? Woo! You're not shouting amen, but I will. Amen, amen, amen. We're acting like you're in a dentist's waiting room. We're in church having a good time. In our life, when will the gallons of water be turned into wine? I just shared with you that it will happen at the new conversion, and the best for last will be when we go into the kingdom of God, into heaven. We start out with a full tank. Hello? We start out with a full tank, and then we end up with a half a tank. And then we end up with a quarter of a tank. And then we live our life going, 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 gone. You better get whatever you've got, whether it's a quarter of a tank, half a tank, or a full tank. You better get it transformed into the high octane of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. You better let God transform your life. Amen. Woo! Now here's where we're going to get a little bit the Bible says that disciples believed after he turned the water into wine. Well, they were believers before that happened. But that's what church is about, to make us believe more, believe, believe, and believe, and believe, and believe more. The feasting lasted for days. The gallons 
were burning joy in people's hearts. But one day, they will run out. And that's why if you drink of this water, you'll thirst again. But if you drink of the waters that Jesus Christ gives you, you will never thirst again. Amen? Amen? In our church, we have a lot of crazy people. Oh, I mean, never mind. But in our church, we have a lot of crazy people about Jesus Christ. I am crazy about Jesus. You say, well, how do you know you're crazy about Jesus? Because somebody told me just the other day I was crazy. I was talking about Jesus, I said, you're crazy. I said, you better believe it. I'm crazier every day. The more I read the Bible, the more I lose my mind. Amen? My carnal mind. Amen? We are a church that believes in God's miracle power. We believe in God's miracle power because the Bible is a miracle book. It's not just water that was put in those pots of stone. And this book, this Bible is not just a book. And church is not just church. And worship is not just worship. Praise is not just praise. It is a miracle blessing of God. We need to fill everything we have to the brim so that Jesus Christ can take care of us and watch over us. I believe, you say, preacher, how could you possibly get healing out of this, out of this miracle? Well, how I many would agree that turning water into wine was definitely a miracle? And how I many know that if Jesus can do that, he can also heal, save, Bring healing, bring deliverance. He's the God of miracle power. So that brings me to the thought that it's not just water. I wrote these down as I looked them up. The body is made up of 60 to 75% water. But it's just not water. It's not just water. Hello? Hello? The brain is made up of 70% water. And it's not just water. Lungs are 83% water. But it's just it's not just water. Kidneys are 80 to 85% water, but it's not. And even our blood is 51% water. Our blood but the life of the flesh is not in the water. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So the blood is not just water. The heart is 70% water, but it's not just water. The kidneys are 85 to 80 to 85% water. The body is made up of mostly water. You say, preacher, how can you get healing out of this? I want you to understand something. Our brain is not just water. I've met some folks that I thought so, but anyway, 70% water, the brain. Hello? That leaves 27% sanity. Hello? So if our brain is 70%, 78% water, why can't Jesus take a brain that's damaged and turn it into healing wine? Change the waters in one's body to bring healing by transformation. Isn't that good? I thought of that and I thought, wow. Healing for the brain. Why? Because Jesus can turn that water into transformation. 
Healing for the lungs because Jesus can take that water and a transformation comes. Healing for the kidneys because Jesus can take that water and heal those kidneys. Healing for the bloodstream because Jesus can take those waters and turn it to pure, holy, precious blood. Uh, healing for the body that's 60 to 75% water and he can turn that water into a manifestation and a deliverance by healing for the body, the heart, it's full, 70% of water. The heart is there. Why can't Jesus transform the heart? Why can't Jesus transform the mind? Why can't Jesus transform the kidneys? Why can't Jesus transform the tainted blood? Why can't Jesus transform the body? Why can't Jesus transform every area of our life and transform our skin, our bones, the sinew? Why can't Jesus do it? We're made of water. We're made of water. And you've seen what Jesus Christ did with water. He turned it into wine. Wow. You didn't think I could get healing out of this, did you? Well, I did. And it's, the beautiful thing is that we can look at this and realize that Jesus Christ, this first miracle was a type of the rest of his miracles, which was healing the blind, cleansing the leper, healing the weathered arm, healing the leprosy. This first beginning of miracles was a type, the law of first mention. Why can't we understand that these bodies of flesh that are more water than, than anything else, why can't we understand that our life is more than just water? And that Jesus Christ can transform our bodies into something more than just water. We can transform our, transform our lives into healing. I don't know whether... Brother Don DeMay is watching tonight. He's wrestling with cancer in the pancreas. I don't know whether Bobby is watching tonight, cancer in the stomach. And both of them are doing so good. They're doing so well. I don't know whether Jim is listening to our live stream tonight, but he has kidney waiting, awaiting a kidney transplant. And he's doing so good. Jimmy Harris if anyone knew what that man has went through, I mean, from cancer to brain surgery, so many things in his life. And if he's watching tonight, and he probably will watch tonight, I want you to know that Jesus can take these old barrels of water. Woo! He can take these old bags of water and he can turn it into transformation. Like he turned water into wine, he can turn the stomach, healed by the power of God, transformation. He can change the residue of the pancreas and he can remove the tumor. And he can use the waters and bring healing because our God is a God of transformation. And one day the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout and these old bodies of clay will have a transformation and will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. These old water pots are going to be transfer, uh, transformed into the image of Jesus Christ in an everlasting incorruptible body. <laughs> Woo! You say, preacher, you make me nervous. Well, I just hope you're beside me when we're caught up into the clouds. See, the first miracle that Jesus performed was turning water into wine. It's not by accident. We're made up mostly of water. And it was not, it, it, it's not just water. Your brain is not just water. Your heart is not just water. And so Jesus can take the waters of our life. It can transform our life and bring healing to our life. Oh, we don't need wine. 
but we might need some healing. We don't need wine, but we may need some strength. We, might, we don't need wine, but we may need some encouragement and some strength in our heart. We may not need wine, we may, but we may need a healing down deep in our body or in our heart or in our lungs or in our blood uh, stream. We may not need wine, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ can turn water into healing. He can turn water into transformation. He can bring healing to your so, isn't that good? See, it's not by accident that God made Adam and Eve, or actually made Adam from the dust of the ground. He breathed into Adam's nostril the breath of life. And then somewhere along the line, he filled him up with water. Hello? Somewhere, I don't know when he did it, it ain't like he backed him up to a garden hose and filled him up with water. You know what he filled Adam with? He filled Adam with the everlasting waters that comes from Jesus Christ. He filled Adam up with eternal, everlasting waters. And so when, whenever something happened with Adam, of course, when he sinned, he, he lost his position I believe Adam will be in heaven, by the way, because God's a just God, and he did offer a sacrifice for Adam and Eve. Amen. Hello. When I get to heaven, and I am going, by the way, when I get to heaven, I'm going to go find Eve. Just out of spite to some of your ridiculous beliefs, and I'm going to ask her to bake me a big old apple pie. Because it wasn't the apple on the tree. It was a pear on the ground that messed up. I believe the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the most beautiful fruit that ever existed other than the tree of life fruit. And I don't even believe it's in existence now. It's in the hearts of wicked men. It's in the hearts of wicked minds. But I want you to know that... Have you ever read through the Scriptures and seen how many times God did a miracle in, in water? He walked on the water. He spoke to the water, peace be still. He parted the waters in, in uh, Moses' day. He turned water into wine, his first miracle. It's just like Jesus came and said, okay, let's start with some water. Hello? And Mary says to Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus says, woman, if I'd have said that to my mother, she'd have slapped me in the next week. But Jesus was trying to tell her, look, I'm not on your agenda. I'm following the Father above. And I don't think he spoke woman to insult her. I think he just wanted her to know that he wasn't working on her timetable. Hello. And she may have very well, whatever he says to do, do it. She may have thought to go to town and get some wine or go find some, buy some, but she maybe didn't know that Jesus was going to tell her. Okay, okay, everybody, hear me, Jesus says. Hear me, everybody. Now hear me. Go fill them six pots of stone with water. And those pots of stone were used to wash feet, wash hands. It was used for purification. And Jesus tells the servant, go get water, fill the water pots of stone, 180 gallons of water. They filled them to the brim. And I can hear Mary, the mother of Jesus, say, I asked for wine, not water. I said they're out of Wine, son, not water.
but Jesus turned the water into wine. You probably never heard a sermon like this in your life about healing, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus can take the waters of any organ of your body and he can transform it like he turned water into wine. He can give you a conversion, a turnaround, a healing. He can make it brand new. All he needs is the water that's in that body to listen to his voice. All he needs is the water that's in your body to be transformed to produce a brand new kidney or a brand new stomach or a brand new heart, a brand new pancreas. Isn't that good? So I do believe in healing. I believe that God's a God of miracles. So when you pray, it's not just prayer. God answers prayer. When you come to church, it's not just church. God hears us, and we worship Him and love Him. When you read your Bible, it's not just words. It's everlasting, eternal words that will never die. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, Jesus Christ said, shall not pass away. So you want a miracle? Fill your heart to the brim with God's wa wondrous water, water word. Just, just fill your mind, God, the water of God's word. Just fill your mind. Use the word of God. And then God will speak and God will bring healing. Say, so what if I'm not healed? Well, he saved the best for last, right? There'll be a transformation sooner or later. Amen? And we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in there. That could happen any moment too, by the way. I thought our singers tonight just did an incredible job. I did. I, th I thought the music was just awesome. And when I listened to the music tonight and thought, awesome, 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 I said, please, Jesus, don't let me blow it tonight. Please, Jesus, don't let me flop. Please, Jesus. I don't want to lay a dinosaur egg. Please, Jesus, I want to preach a good sermon. <laughs> But they did so good. Jimmy does a good job on them glorified Chinese chopsticks. Amen. Praise the Lord. I bet he could use him in a Chinese restaurant. The way he plays drums, I guarantee you he could make music at a plate of Chinese food. Amen. What a, what a good usher to come with that cup of offering. <laughs> no, I want you to stand and come and bring a song. Say, so did you do that deliberately? I ain't telling. I'm 70 years old and I'm not telling. <laughs> Pray for Bobby Baldridge. Pray for Don DeMay. Pray for Jimmy Harris. Pray for those that need healing. Jim um, what is his last? I forgot his last name. Jim Hughes, is it? I think it's Hughes. Yeah, pray for Jim Hughes. Pray for those that need healing. Amen. The Lord will just do big things in their life. Altars open. You want to come and talk to the Lord? Trust me, we're not taking an offering. The altars open. Okay.